RV's Gone Wild. RV's Gone Wild number 22. Look at this beautiful trailer. Look at this beautiful place that I'm staying. RV's Gone Wild number 22. I'm out here on the road, so I can't do this at home. Right now I'm doing this while I'm traveling. I'm in the Okanagan region of BC. We got a whole lot of RVs to look at, so let's get started. All right, this first one we got is explosive. We have this RV exploding. Understand that nobody was killed in this, but there were some folks hurt. The original news article didn't say what the cause was, but I think all of us can assume that this is propane. Check it out. Burning through the roof, the walls, the windows. And take a look at this video of the moment it exploded. You can see the fireball as the RV goes up in flames. And you can see a man drop to the ground and roll. One neighbor says it was like a scene out of a movie. Another who lives next door tells me he could hear that explosion, saw the billowing black smoke and orange flames. It was just engulfed in flames and it just seemed like there was nothing you could do. John O'Donnell says the explosion shook his home down the street. We heard a big explosion and I looked out the window and then I just saw tons of smoke going up into the sky. Now we know two people were airlifted to a Boston hospital. Investigators say three in total were hurt, all from the same family. Investigators telling us a grandfather, dad, and son were all hurt. Now back out here live, you can see just how hot those flames were. A neighbor telling us the wind was blowing in this direction, and you can see where it actually melted the siding of this blue home. I'll take you a little bit further down, even melting the mailbox, and you can see that RV just destroyed those flames tearing through here. Neighbors tell us the family that owns this RV was working on it, but the fire chief says the cause of the flames are under investigation. So if I find out more about this and the results of what the investigation was on why it exploded, I'll post that here. Let's get on to the next one. Here's something you don't want to see at your RV dealership, a tornado coming your way with all those RVs. That's my worst fear as an RV camper. Right next to bears is probably tornadoes. Luckily, I live in a place where there isn't tornadoes, but my God, that would scare me. I don't know how you folks do it who live in Tornado Alley. My little brother lives in Iowa. Same thing. Crazy. And this is just a crazy homemade camper that I found online. A little boxy. It seems like it's going to be a little rough in the wind there with that big front end. But hey, if you're going to make it yourself, have fun with it. This accident happened on the Dempster Highway. This is a remote, like 500 mile road that goes uh, into the Arctic Ocean. It's, it's actually on my bucket list. For those of you who have been following my channel know that for the last two years I've been wanting to go. I had to cancel it again this year, but next year I'm gonna make it all the way to the Arctic Ocean with my Ember. You wait and see. On the Dempster, you have to be really careful because if you do crash, there is no one around to help you for hundreds and hundreds of miles. All right, this one, if you don't follow this off-road recovery uh, channel that I watch, I'm going to go ahead and link to it below. But they had this crazy fifth wheel. I'm going to let him explain the situation. All right, so we're going to explain this casualty here. So each hill, if you look back there, goes straight down. And then there's a hill over here. Goes straight up. So it's about a thousand feet down this road and it goes up 100 feet, has a small flat area, up another 100 feet, small flat area. The guy was pulling this big camper and he could not make it up this hill. When this driver realized they couldn't get up the hill, what did they do? They unhooked their fifth wheel trailer. It wasn't properly chalked and it just flew down the hill, and went right into the bushes like you saw. This leads to two rules you always got to remember. One is always chalk your wheels heavily if you're on an incline. Two is never unhook your trailer if you're stuck. If you're stuck somewhere and you're hooking up with your trailer, stay hooked up to your trailer until help arrives. When the professionals arrive, they'll decide whether or not you should unhook your trailer or not. In most situations, it's best to leave the truck attached to the trailer. I'll put a link to off-road campers in the description. Check their page out if you want to see how they recovered this rig. Let's get on to the next one. Craig M sent me this weird little camper that was sitting in New Zealand. That's right, I got folks from all around the world sending me stuff, and this came from New Zealand. 
Doesn't quite look like it fits, but if you put some straps on there, that's not going anywhere. We got another crash. This one happened where basically a class A went off the road and into a river. Uh, from what I understand, everyone got out fine. But look at here at the type of heavy equipment you need to get a rig of this size unstuck. Remember folks, slow down out there. Ed McNair sent these into us. He's owned multiple RVs over the last 25 years, and he currently owns a 2000 Beaver Patriot Class A diesel pusher. And he tows a 2011 GMC Savannah Class B custom van. That's quite a big rig there. The name of his RV is, it's somewhere. He's currently in the Piney Woods of East Texas, and his little toad is called Big Van Go. If you have pictures or videos of cool RVs or you have pictures of your pets, make sure to send them our way. We love to see pets that go RVing. You can send all your pictures and videos to us at rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. We try to use them all. Can't quite get to every one of them, but please send them our way. Dan Quinn sent these in to us. He just wanted to share his rig, his kayak, and his whole RVing experience. Thanks for sending in these pictures, Dan. Dan's a big fan of the show, and he loves going to lakes, obviously. Dale S. sent this to us. Yet another set of RV accidents that happened. This one is in Rockbridge County, Virginia. Dan's an RVer himself with a 2019 Travelite Aura. And I'm sure we both want to remind everyone to slow down and be careful out there on the road, folks. we got to share the road. We don't want to see accidents like this. Here's a homemade camper I found. It's actually built on a flatbed. I'm part of a Facebook group called Flatbed Campers. If you're interested in this style, you can join it. All kinds of crazy, unique, cool ideas there. Tim M. sent us his rig. It's a 2019 Ram 3500 HD, pulling a 2017 StarCraft 25 RES and his 2023 Polaris General XB on a car trailer. He likes to go out to the desert in Southern California, but he's been out to Utah too. He's out of Santa Clarita, California. And you know what, Tim? That means it's time for Turducken. You know what turducken is, that's where we take a turkey, and inside the turkey we put a duck, inside the duck we put a chicken. It's a great recipe, it tastes great, but it's a really interesting way to tell. Let's take a look at some RV and trailer turduckens. Brian Johnson from ATV Safety Training, he's a big fan of the channel, we really got to meet up soon. And here he has a sort of turducken where he's got to mount a bunch of ATVs on the back of his truck while still bringing his trailer as he goes around and teaches AT safety from British Columbia. Cyril and Mary Jo, they're from Thunder and Lightning Go RVing. This is their rig leaving Rapid City, South Dakota last Christmas after Mary got her knee replacement. As soon as the doctors cleared her for work, they were out on the road. What they want to do is build a custom bed on the back of that heavy duty truck and that way they can put the Jeep on top of the truck and only be towing the one single trailer. Makes sense, makes it a little shorter, a little easier to handle. And I'm sure that rig is banned from some states as it currently is. I want to thank John H. for sending in these photos. This is his 2002 F-250 and his vintage 1979 sliding camper. He says he's too old for pull-down steps, so he made a utility trailer as a pull-behind deck. He says he watches every episode, and that's what gave him the idea. I really want to thank you for watching the videos, John, and I'm really glad you were able to get some ideas from it. And thanks for sending us the pictures. George M. wanted to share with us his three summertime fun builds. He loves watching our channel with his kid. Yep, George, pasting these all together is definitely some old school turducken. I love the bike on the back. And he wanted to thank us for making the videos. Well, I want to thank you and everyone for watching. I really enjoy all the feedback I get. If you have any comments, comment below. Tell me what you think of the channel or what you'd like to see on the channel. Or you can send me your comments to rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. Hermes wanted to share with us his Mississippi turducken. He's down in Biloxi. I love that town. Had a great experience when I had a tire blow out in Biloxi. Had a local uh, tire repairman fix me up and get me out the door real quick. I'll always remember Biloxi is a good town. Jennifer M wanted to share their turducken. They actually go drag racing with a family of four. So they got their 2012 Ford F-350 that pulls their 2010 36 fifth wheel camper and their 2023 25 foot enclosed trailer. They get some pretty crazy looks when they roll around there. Yeah, racing rigs always get wild. You got a lot to bring out to the track. Mike C. wanted to share his turducken. I'm not totally sure what we got going on there, but it looks like we got some boats strapped to the top of the RV with a whole lot of straps, so that's not going anywhere. Monty P., he's from Alberta. He's a local Canadian. He's been to BC quite a few times camping. 
He's out sometimes with his quads, sometimes with his 16 foot jet boat from the Fraser Harrison River, that's right around our area, Kootenai Lake where I just was. He built the quad deck back in 2007. Monty P's got everything. He's got the quads. He's got the boat. He's got the 3,000 watt Honda generator. That's what I got too. Great minds think alike. But the coolest thing that Monty included was a video. I've been asking recently for these people who put their boat over their truck, how do they get it off? Well, he included this great long slow video that shows it coming down slowly off the ramps with a winch at top. Clearly there's extra wheels on the trailer to make it all work and come down in a clean manner. Now it makes sense. So when you see these folks who put a boat on the back of their truck and then they're towing a trailer, you wonder how they're gonna get the boat off? Here's how. Monty gets a lot of attention when he pulls into campsites, I bet, with a rig like this. I hope we cross paths up there, Monty. Let's stay in touch. Hey, Alex G spotted this around Dawson City in Canada in the Yukon. He said it had a very loud exhaust that was probably rusted out. It was some kind of one-man RV with a single bed, and it was based on a Japan imported right-hand drive mini pickup. Billy H found this picture. I can't believe it's real, but people used to build things like this, I guess. Chassis like that can handle it back then, like I always say. I'm sure this thing had a lot of sway. Brad S. wanted to share this Overland trailer. It's his friend Alex who's building this Jeep Overland trailer. He's not finished, but he's doing a trial run by Shoshone Falls in Idaho. I used to live in Idaho. Brad, if I'm in Twin Falls, you know I'll look you up. Thanks for the invite, buddy. And we got another Chops trailer. This time it's a 4Runner. Brett K. sent this to us. It's a Toyota 4Runner. He spotted it in Oregon. So it's not his. But thanks for sending it in. And please send me your pictures and your videos. RVingwithJoeGmail.com See something cool? Snap a pic, send it my way. Chris L. from Scranton, Pennsylvania spotted this rig. He called it a redneck rig. I'd say so. This is definitely home built. I don't know if you want to take it down the freeway. Keep it on the slow roads. Chris Spencer's a friend of the channel. He actually manages the KOA down in Las Vegas, the one near Samstown. So he always sees the craziest rigs. This one he spotted actually had awnings on both sides. Something he had not seen, and I haven't really seen that much either. Does anybody out there have awnings on both sides of their RV? Tell me about it. Check out this amazing two-story trailer that Chris B sent in to us. I've never seen anything quite like this one. A two-story trailer. And I had a chance to talk to its owner, Shirley Wallace, who actually grew up in this trailer until she went off to college. And uh, she's gonna tell us all about it. Hello, my name's Shirley Wallace, and this is my 1953 Spartan Trailer Manor. It's a double ender. It was purchased new in 1953. In 1957, my sister and I got too large to sleep on the front bedroom, I mean front sofa. So my dad went ahead and bought the parts from Spartan Aircraft and he built the second story on in 1957 down in San Diego, California. And my dad cleaned out the closet and that's where he put in the stairway to the second story. And so this just goes up, up there. There's two bedrooms upstairs. There's also closets for both my sister and I. And our original beds were actually a foam pad built on a platform which is on top of what was the original top of the first story. So that way we each had our own bedroom. Jason N spotted this rig outside his bank in Woodbury, Minnesota. The camper shell was homemade. He says the canoe was handmade as well. He's been enjoying our RV's Gone Wild videos and he also added a new pic of his new to him 1998 Wander Lodge and three of his four camping cats. We'll also include those cats in RVing with pets in the next episode coming up. Thanks, Jason. Jerry H. sent me this. I guess it's basically a Winnebago that looks all old school on the outside, like they haven't touched it, but on the inside, it's completely redone. It's not necessarily meant for sleeping in anymore. It was made, apparently, for displaying at the SEMA show in Vegas. And Jerry from West Virginia, thanks for sending this our way. And I just want to give a shout-out to one of my young little fans, Jacob, out at Bellafonte, Pennsylvania. Thanks a lot for watching, buddy. I appreciate that you like the show, and we're going to keep more and more episodes coming for people just like you. Hope you get out there and RV yourself one day. I know you're a big fan of the Ember. There it is right behind me. I'm a big fan, too. And from Tim B., we've got the Great Dale House Car. It was a factory-built Dodge Comet Great Dale House Car. They were manufactured in Colorado for a short period. He spotted this one for sale on Craigslist for like twenty-nine grand with 25,000 miles on it. Seems like a good deal. That's gorgeous on the inside, Tim. 
Heck, I'll put a link to the ad in the description if you're interested. And that's another episode of Arby's Gone Wild number 22. Remember, folks, send me your stuff. If you got funny videos, if you got cool pictures, if you got a link to something, send it my way at rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. I'm going to finish up this vacation. I got multiple vacation videos coming out, including this vacation I'm on right now, which I'll be putting out in probably just a few weeks. I've got all kinds of travel videos coming. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you really want to help me out, share these videos with your friends or share a link to my channel on your social media. And then drop me a comment telling me that you did it. See everyone, sorry for the wind.